Here is your latest African news. Diaspora. Some Ethiopian-American voters protest, voted for the Republicans, and how this is a disaster for Democrats elsewhere. Ethiopian-Americans in Virginia have heeded calls to cast a vote for the GOP at the polls earlier this month amid a coordinated effort to express disapproval with how President Biden's administration has been interfering in Ethiopian politics. Those involved in the effort support Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who won the Nobel Peace Prize two years ago. Leaders of the effort say that the authorizing sanction on Ethiopian and cutting off trade benefits, Biden has effectively empowered the Tigray People's Liberation Front, a repressive regime that led the country before Abid and was designated as a terrorist grouping. And with the seemingly no response to the concerns from the White House, organizers said Abid supporters in Virginia took their message to the polls despite or perhaps because of the Ethiopian community's long allegiance with Democrats. There are more plans to continue this trend hitting the Democrats where it hurts most. Libya Son of former Libyan President Gaddafi runs for president. Saf al-Islam Gaddafi, son of Libya's former leader Muammar Gaddafi, has registered as the presidential candidate for the country's December election, an official from the Electoral Commission said. Gaddafi is one of the most prominent figures expected to run for president, at least that includes renegade Eastern Commander Galifa Afta, Prime Minister Abdul Hamid, and Parliament Speaker Aguila Saleh. Diaspora. Brazil kicks off Black Consciousness Week with music and dance. Resident of Falelas around the Brazilian city of Rio de Janeiro celebrated Black Awareness on Saturday with music and dancing, paying homage to the heritage of many who live in these communities. Rio City Hall sponsored the Fola de Reyes event to highlight Black Awareness in Falelas, giving local sense of pride and appreciation in their community. Brazil kick off Black Consciousness Week with a promise of educating the community about the trials, tribulations, and accomplishments of black people throughout South and Latin America. Brazil's black community progress includes a nearly two decades old law that requires the teaching of Afro-Brazilian history and culture in schools. Eritrea Eritrea condemns new U.S. sanctions. Eritrea has commended sanctions imposed by the U.S. on six targets associated with the Eritrean government and the ruling party in connection with the conflict in Ethiopia. In a statement, the Eritrean government stated, The people and the government deplore, in letter and spirit, the illicit and unilateral sanctions and urge all peace and justice-loving, sovereign and independent peoples and forces to lend their support to Eritrea. The comment come after the Biden administration issued the first tranche of sanction targeting those involved in the Ethiopian conflict. Eritrea sent its military into northern Ethiopian northern Tigray region after the TPLF rebels launched missiles on the capital Asmara. Meanwhile, Ethiopia has also denounced the U.S. move, saying the TPLF first fired rockets to Eritrea, a sovereign country, and it is the sovereign rights of the Eritrean government to respond to imminent danger to its territorial integrity and security. Just imagine if Mexico or Canada fired missiles at Washington, D.C., what are the chances U.S. will not retaliate? Zero. South African professor Mashuda Chifularo performs world's first 3D middle ear surgery. A South African professor has become the first person to perform a 3D middle ear surgery. Professor Chifularo grew up as a herdsman in the village of Mbahela, outside Tohoyandu in Venda, at the age of 13. The professor already knew he would be a doctor. He was determined to be a doctor and that would leave a lasting impression on the world. This very month, he accomplished just that by becoming the first person ever to perform a middle ear surgery with the help of 3D technology. This achievement breaks news ground in modern medicine. The surgery involved the transplantation of a 3D hammer anvil stirrup on a 40-year-old Thobo Moshiliwa who had his hearing affected after a car accident. Burundi, protection of the northern lakes already bearing fruits. A few years ago, the northern region of Burundi, particularly Kirunda province, was threatened by desertification. This also threatened the northern lakes, including Lake Weru. Today, thanks to the efforts to protect the buffer zone, fish production is on the rise, and this creates jobs and contribution to the community's development. With this increase in production, investors have created work on the lake. This provides a living for families. The administration says the increase is real and beneficial. Northern in Burundi has a total of six lakes and including Lake Weru. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel to Nacheki to watch our daily news reports and our website to Nacheki.tv for the latest news updates. You can directly support our new series by becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon member. And remember, Africa is always watching.